Would Big Ten expansion include Texas A&M? It's a long shot, but it could happen. I'll tell you why. Lockdown Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate visiting with you here. And of course, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. To get started today, we're going to discuss Texas A&M in the Big Ten. There's a couple of things that could fall in a place where maybe that's a possibility. Plus, we've got some uh, news with the Big Ten hoops and Caitlin Clark continuing to chip away at the scoring title. Uh, she has a game tonight. We have our power rankings as well. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. Well, there's some chatter that the Big Ten would like Texas A&M to join the conference, and the feeling could be mutual. I'm all for it because it's great for football, certainly. But a lot of stuff needs to happen and be sorted out first, so we thought we'd do that here today. Um, we're just a few months away from seeing the Big Ten expand to 18 schools with USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington beginning league play this fall. But you and I both know that the Big Ten is not going to stop at 18, all right? It's going to be a nice round number of 20 at least eventually. And I think that'll be the minimum. Who knows? It could be more after that, but they're not stopping at 18. And let's set aside the Notre Dame argument for some other time. They're always a wild card in the conversation, but I don't think that's happening anytime soon. This podcast is spent a lot of time closely watching the developments of the ACC. I know A&M's in the SEC. We'll circle into that in a bit. Several teams want out of their TV deal with the ACC. It's got 12 years left on it. We also believe that there are several ACC teams that would make excellent Big Ten teams should the ACC blow up. And it is the position of Lockdown Big Ten that we do think the ACC eventually will blow up. It's just a matter of time. Their current situation is not sustainable. Their schools are losing too much money. And a while back, we took a hard look at Florida State and Clemson and whether they were good candidates for the Big Ten. There's some uh, positives and negatives, some pros and cons regarding that. Just to update you, since we did that podcast several weeks ago, Florida State's lawyers are trying feverishly to get out of that ACC TV deal. And the ACC has since, as of a couple of weeks ago, filed a countersuit against Florida State for breach of contract. So here we are. We're, we're getting on with this here. It could get ugly, but I think by late spring, early summer, we may have a feel for what direction that thing is going to go and see which way the wind is blowing on that deal. And while a future Big Ten with a Florida State or Clemson is very interesting, and I think a lot of people would like it, uh, I think the conference has its eyes actually on North Carolina and Virginia. Those schools always seem to come up in the conversation, no matter who else we're talking about. Why, you ask? Well, those schools are very similar to the schools already in the Big Ten, and they'd be very interesting basketball schools, even though we know that football drives everything that we do and talk about and everybody gets paid for. But the Big Ten might not be alone in its interest for North Carolina and Virginia should the ACC blow up. These schools are very attractive to the SEC as well. Again, this is if the ACC blows up or when the ACC blows up, according to me. Um, we may have a bidding war between the Big Ten and the SEC and the schools kind of playing out their options a little bit. So this is where Texas A&M comes into the conversation because certainly the Big, uh, Big Ten would love to have uh, the state of Texas involved. They would love for recruiting, for money, for markets. They would love to get their footprint into the state of Texas. So 
That could open the door for Texas A&M to leave the SEC if it wanted to find a new home. But And there's been some rumblings that maybe they do want to leave the SEC. We'll get into those in a minute. I don't know if they're good enough to leave, the, the, the uh, reasons to leave. I don't think they're good enough reasons. But their old rival, Texas, is about to join them in the SEC. Now, they haven't played since 2012 in that rivalry. It's one of the best rivalries of yesteryear. That could be renewed. So why would the Aggies even want to consider leaving the SEC? I've uh, I've been told stories from just this past spring that maybe there are some people that would be interested in getting out of the SEC. Maybe they want to go with Arkansas as a group and go back to the Big 12. Go back to the, go to the Big 12. Maybe. Again, why make such a move? Especially when you now have 12 teams getting into the playoffs, you don't have to win the SEC to get into that playoff anymore. And they would make far less money in the Big 12 than they would in the SEC or the Big 10. So that part doesn't make sense to me. And when you win in doubt, always go back to the money for the reasoning. And I don't think they'll go because of the money. But, you know, would they want to go to the Big 12 because with Texas and Oklahoma leaving and their departure for the SEC, they could maybe go to a conference where they could dominate? Are they running away from all the, the stacked SEC schools? It's too tough to win that conference. I don't know. Is a smaller paycheck worth it? I don't think so. Or is AM trying to avoid playing Texas? It seems like if these rumors are true, I, I, I don't know. Well, I used to live in Texas, and I lived there during the time when the Aggies and the Longhorns played their final and uh, their final rivalry game. And it seems that Texas was more eager to continue than the Aggies with, uh, with the rivalry, and it's just been dead, and then they've all gone their separate ways. Uh, eventually the Aggies bolted for the SEC. And now that the Longhorns are coming to the SEC, maybe Texas A&M doesn't want to share the limelight with the Longhorns in the state of Texas. I don't know. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Um, all the little chatter that's out there about this. So it means somebody's talking about it. Like I told you, where there's smoke, there's always fire. That's what I always go by. Maybe A&M doesn't think that it can uh, make it to the top of the SEC with all the competition. Again, I told you just a moment ago, that's, that's not as relevant anymore with the expansion of the playoffs. But and, and plus, don't forget, Nick Saban's departure from Alabama, that could change everything. The SEC's up for grabs, man. I know Georgia and Kirby Smart are still rolling, but that, that conference is it's gettable. I mean, you remove one of the pillars of that, uh, that conference with Nick Saban and Alabama, anything can happen. And again, with the 12-team playoff, it doesn't matter if you're first or second or third in the SEC. You're, you're going to the playoffs. And by the way, if they move to the Big Ten, that's no cakewalk either. I could argue that it's more stacked once you got these teams from the Pac-12. So, um, I, I'm, again, I'm sure the Big Ten would love it to have A&M and just have, have access to the state of Texas. The Big Ten's already gone from coast to coast. Now they like to dive down into the south just a little bit. But like I said, that would require a certain chain reaction for all that to happen and for us to entertain this conversation any further uh, than we already have. But I'd like to know what you think. You guys always have uh, interesting comments on it. Uh, you can hit me up at Twitter or X at TalkBig10, number 10, the comments on YouTube, and, of course, our website, TalkBig10, number 10.com, and our website, TalkBig10.com. Get some uh, swag from your favorite school right there. Uh, ticket information, everything right there at our website. And that's where we archive all of our podcasts as well. So uh, hit me up there. But as of today, I don't think anything happens with this. Again, it'd be a huge chain reaction of events one way or the other before you can even start entertaining uh, a and you know, I don't know why they would want to leave the SEC. Maybe they don't. They certainly could stay there and stay put. Love to hear from you on that. We'll have the latest news some big basketball news going on. Oh, hey, who's going to be the new offensive coordinator officially at Michigan? I want to talk about that. And could a former, recently former NFL coach join a staff in the Big Ten? Some questions for you. We'll have all of that. It comes up in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. Hey, happy Super Bowl to all that uh, celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about being locked in, comfy on the couch, snacks, beverages, ready to go. It's a four-hour fest of football. And uh, 
make FanDuel a part of it, man. You, the prop bets that are available for Super Bowl make the game so much more fun than it already is. Uh, FanDuel has so many ways for you to end your season with a W, right? It's just maybe two, maybe three. Parlay a bunch of uh, prop bets. Um, you know, not only can you bet who's going to win the Super Bowl, and again, it's the Niners minus two right now, point total 47 and a half. Um, you can bet on which players will score a touchdown, who will score a touchdown first, how many points will be scored, get the exact score. All these are these individual, how long the national anthem is by Reba McIntyre. All this stuff is out there. Um, it's it's fun. I do it every year. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day, especially you everydayers. If you're a newbie and you're just checking us out, hey, thank you. Continue to come here every single day and tell your friends about us. Meanwhile, all of you, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're always looking for more subscribers. That really helps us out here. And you can share, follow, and like Locked On Big Ten, your team, every day. Again, and don't forget to check out our website, uh, talkbig10number10.com, as well for everything that we do. So while the NFL coach job carousel continues to spin round and round, a couple of really good coaches could be odd men out when the musical chairs is done and all the coaching vacancies are all filled up. And one person could be Mike Vrabel. I haven't heard much about him lately since he was let go by the Tennessee Titans at the end of the season. That was a surprising move, by the way. Almost everyone acknowledges he is an upper echelon coach, but to date, hadn't been hired, and it doesn't appear that he will be. So is it possible that maybe he does a one-year bridge job somewhere just to stay in the game? Maybe as an analyst, you know, that's what they've been doing down at Alabama. Nick Saban's been taking coaches in between gigs or coaches that maybe their career's taking a hit. They go and re I call it coaches rehab. You go join Nick Saban's uh, staff for a year or two. You get whatever job you want coming out of there because you're tied to him. Is it possible maybe that Mike Vrabel don't want to sit around for a year? He's got a couple of connections in the Big Ten, and I'm wondering if you might consider something like this. Uh, Wisconsin, number one. Wisconsin head coach Luke Fickle and Mike Vrabel, they're friends. They were teammates, and they were roommates at Ohio State back in the day. They even worked briefly together on the Ohio State staff many years ago. Hey, while we're at it, maybe Vrabel would consider an analyst job for a year with Ryan Day. I don't know if Ryan Day is offering that or not at Ohio State, but maybe something to take a look at. It would be interesting. I don't know. Maybe I would just take the money and chill for a year and then get back into coaching next year if that's the case. Also, with all the drama going on with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan, was he going to stay? Was he going to go? He ultimately goes to the Chargers. Sheryl Moore, would he be the next guy? Yes, he was. Um, who's going to call plays, offensive plays for Michigan? That was Sheryl Moore's job. He has indicated he has not fully decided yet if he will call players or not, but he's leaning toward not calling plays. Um, again, that was his job before Harbaugh left. But he wants to be more of a CEO coach. There's a lot going on. Uh, maybe you want somebody else to call plays. So um, it's possible, I think, we think, assistant coach Kirk Campbell or somebody else on the staff, but maybe Campbell, will be elevated. Campbell was the quarterback's coach. Worked out pretty well with J.J. McCarthy. He's a pretty good recruiter. And uh, he was previously at Penn State. So he knows not only Michigan, but he knows the Big Ten from, from another perspective. He used to call plays at Old Dominion back in the day. Uh, he also took over as offensive coordinator during the first game of the season. Remember, it wasn't just Harbaugh. Sharon, Sharon Moore sat out that first game as well. And Campbell was the one that called the plays for that East Carolina game, the season opener, and the Wolverines won 30-3. to three. I think it's going to be his gig. All right? Also, speaking of Michigan, unlike Nick Saban's departure at Alabama, that was followed by a mass exodus of players already there and the recruits, some 26 at uh, last count, and then have headed to the transfer portal. As you know, when Michigan made a coaching change, that opened up the portal possibilities for the Michigan kids. It's been, it's been quiet in Ann Arbor following the Harbaugh departure. 
But we do have our first official departure since this transfer portal, since Jim Harbaugh left. Reese Atterbury, a senior defensive lineman who appeared in 24 games at Michigan. Remember, he started off on the offensive line and then uh, a little more than a year ago switched over to defensive line. Big guy, 6'5", 309 pounds, still got two years of eligibility. He did play in 24 games for the Wolverines, somewhere on offense a couple of years ago and more recently on defense. So uh, he is going to hit the transfer portal. Uh, also, other news, and this is a bigger, this is more important, actually. Harbaugh has talked Michigan's longtime and very well-liked strength and conditioning coach, Ben Herbert, to join him in Los Angeles with the Chargers. We talked about how important the strength and conditioning coach is at these Power 5 schools, and especially if they're good. He's good. You've seen a lot of scrawny freshmen come in, leave as giant men, and have NFL careers because of this guy. Plus, the strength and conditioning coach, he has access to these kids every single day. The NCAA has stupid, outdated, archaic rules where there are periods of time on the calendar where they're not allowed to interact with the kids. Got to give them their free time or whatever. Well, their free time is in the weight room. And that coach has access to these guys all the time. A lot of players, a lot of people will be disappointed that he's going. It may cause some to transfer out. You never know. Um, but yeah, Herbert's going to go to uh, the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh. So that's uh, that's a blow to the Wolverines. That really is. That, that's, a, that's a big deal. They promoted from within to replace them already, but uh, that's uh, that's a tough blow. Meanwhile, men's basketball, a couple of games on tap tonight on Wednesday night, doubleheader on the Big Ten Network. Northwestern at number two, Purdue at Mackey Arena. That's at 6.30 Eastern time. Remember, Northwestern beat Purdue several weeks ago in overtime in Evanston. So this is the revenge game for the Boilermakers. Penn State is at Rutgers at 8.30. And in women's basketball, just a reminder, tonight's the night. Caitlin Clark and the Lady Hawkeyes, uh, she continues her march for milestones in addition to trying to win some games for the Hawkeyes uh, tonight uh, against Northwestern. She needs, Caitlin Clark needs five points to pass Jackie Stiles of Missouri State for third place on the NCAA men's uh, women's all-time scoring list. She's got 3,389 points so far. She is also... 14 points from passing Kelsey Mitchell at Ohio State for second place. She will probably get both of those before halftime. And then her uh, march to number one all time. By the way, that game airs on Peacock, 8 o'clock Eastern tonight if you want to check it out. She is projected to break the Division I women's scoring mark on February 15th. They play Michigan at this current pace. That's what they're saying. More Lady Hoops on the docket tonight. Uh, also on Peacock at 7 o'clock Eastern, number 10, Indiana's at Maryland, Illinois at Michigan at 7 o'clock, Purdue at Nebraska at 8 o'clock, and uh, Penn State is at Minnesota at 8 o'clock as well. Also, a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7. All of our shows are running on a constant loop, news, updates, everything is right there. Uh, on uh, one channel on YouTube, Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube. After you subscribe here to Lockdown Big Ten, feel free to subscribe to that as well. All right, uh, coming up, like we like to do in the middle of the week here on Lockdown Big Ten, we like our power rankings for basketball, men's basketball. We will take care of that in just one minute right here on Lockdown Big Ten. Sports is something we use to escape from the crazy pace and realities of real life. And let's talk a minute about being prepared for real life because stuff happens. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. And that can be pretty scary. It can be scary if you need medicine or an elderly loved one needs it, or maybe your children. You ever have your children need, some, need to have medicine and you can't get it because of some supply chain or something like that. It's crazy. It's a pretty helpless feeling when you have to deal with all that. But thankfully, you can be okay with Jace Medical. They've got a Jace case. Here's one right here they sent to me. It's full of five different antibiotics and uh, you're good to go right to your doorstep and it is easy to do. They got antibiotics for everything, like different kinds because you use different kinds for different illnesses, bacterial illnesses. UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, whatever. Um, they've got something for it, and this stuff can happen to any of us. 
visit jacemedical.com. That's jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. And it'll be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use their offer code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N, locked on to get $20 off your order. Once again, that is jacemedical.com, $20 off your order. All right. Um, last segment of our uh, midweek podcast here, where we like to take a look at our power rankings for men's basketball. And things are starting to shake out a little bit. Teams are kind of separating into their groups. And we got you know a little more than a month before March Madness. So let's take a look at the power rankings and how they are going and how uh, these teams are uh, separating themselves just a little bit. I'll put it on full screen if you're listening on audio only. We're going to keep the Purdue Boilermakers at number one. Uh, Wisconsin is actually – a hair ahead of them in the standings. Zach Eady, I, I don't, again, I can't say enough about Zach Eady. How are you going to defend him? The big question for the Boilermakers, though, after, you know, Fairly Dickinson knocked them out, the 16 versus one, and some other, uh, Matt Painter hasn't gone, you know, he's got to go get to a Final Four with this team. It's good enough to, it's got to do it. Wisconsin is at number two on our list. It's a very experienced team. AJ Store. Uh, one of the best players in the Big Ten. They got a big game coming up at Nebraska. I've told you how tough Nebraska is at home. Uh, Illinois, uh, Terrence Shannon and company uh, sitting at number three. Now, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Illinois, uh, they've been ranked pretty much all season. The only three teams in the Big Ten ranked. So those are our top three teams right there. I say keep an eye, continue on Northwestern. It's a lot of projections are coming out with bracketology. Who's getting in the show? Who's not? A lot of so-called experts other than me have uh, five or six Big Ten teams getting in. I, I said it'll be six. It's just a matter of which six. I mean, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Illinois will get in. I think Northwestern gets in. They are, like I mentioned, they're at Purdue uh, tonight. So we'll see how that game goes. That could go a long way. If Northwestern were to sweep Purdue, I already got one win against them when they were ranked number one. Problems with Northwestern. They're down at the bottom of the Big Ten and rebounding and defense. They're going to have to shore that up. Uh, the team I keep telling you to watch out for is Nebraska. I like them. I like them at home. Casey uh, Tamanaga, 14 points per game. Again, Nebraska hosting Wisconsin coming up this week. That is going to be the game. Wisconsin's good. They're ranked. They're experienced. Go on the road. It's at Nebraska. I tell you, a tough place to play. That's the game to watch. Michigan State is in at number six. Again, for Tom Izzo, man, this is moving time. This is time to get inside the bubble, if you will. They're not there yet. Um, also, Maryland, uh, they've got win, a win against Illinois, quality win. They're at number seven on our list. And they lost to Michigan State this year, but they've got Michigan State again Saturday on Fox, a nationally televised game Saturday night. I believe that is a 5.30 start off the top of my head, Eastern time. So Maryland and Michigan State, this is a big game for both of them. If uh, one wants to assert themselves and get into that uh, bubble, if five or six teams make it to the big uh, from the Big Ten. Uh, I've got the Indiana Hoosiers at number eight, just ahead of Iowa at nine. They just played each other last night. It was a thriller, Indiana. Had a 17-point lead at one point. That was a race. The Hawkeyes came storming back, but the Hoosiers were able to bounce back. Um, um, Xavier Johnson looked like he fell on his wrist, uh, falling off the rim, landing on it. That looks like a bad injury. They had a couple other guys uh, with some, some leg injuries in this game. Um, Malik Renu left limping off. Never saw him in the second half. Khalil Ware, who had just missed the last couple of games, with a bad uh, foot, uh, came back in, looked good till he landed funny after a dunk. Uh, he stayed in the game, but I imagine he's going to be in some pain. So that three injuries, three key injuries for the Hoosiers that Mike Woodson's having to juggle right now, uh, just with beating the Iowa Hawkeyes on Tuesday night. But the Hawkeyes got them at number nine. They that team can still score. 
Um, also at number 10, the Minnesota Golden Gophers had that big win at Penn State last Saturday. That was very exciting for the Gophers. All right, let's see what we have on the best of the rest. Got the Ohio State Buckeyes at number 11. I tell you, every time I talk about them this year, they're just inconsistent. They're just inconsistent basketball, particularly with their shooting on the perimeter. Got uh, Penn State, the Nittany Lions at number 12. Again, a team that's pretty tough at home. Uh, they have, uh, I don't know, Penn State has got to get it going. And then Rutgers, great D, no offense. I will give Rutgers credit, though. They, uh, they played Purdue pretty tough. What was it, 68-60? And Purdue, Purdue almost never wins at uh, at Rutgers, but so Zach Eady said he never. That's one place he had never won, so he got that checked off. Zach Eady, Purdue, they were able to win at Rutgers, but Rutgers came in there and played some defense on them. And then rounding out the bottom, we got the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, Jawan Howard is having a tough time with this team right now, so I got him at the bottom, ranked 14th here on our Big Ten Power Rankings. So that's a look at it again. A uh, real quick review. Again, Purdue one, Wisconsin two, and Illinois rounding out the top three. Northwestern, Nebraska, and Michigan four, five, and six. The Terps, the Hoosiers, the Hawkeyes, and the Golden Gophers round out our top ten. And then the Buckeyes, Nittany Lions, the uh, Knights of Rutgers, Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, the Michigan Wolverines rounding out our list. We do the power rankings every Wednesday, right here on Lockdown Big Ten. If you agree or disagree with any of these, hit me up. You can hit me up on Twitter or X at Talk Big Ten at any time. Love to hear from you, whether it's about this power ranking or anything else. Comments, of course, on YouTube. And don't forget our website, TalkBig10Number10.com. TalkBig10.com. Uh, and uh, get your merch for shirts and hats from your favorite schools of the Big Ten. And uh, also ticket information there if you want to go to a Big Ten game. It's all right there. And all of our previous podcasts all are there at the website, talkbig10.com. If you want to go find something we did in the past and it's sectioned off as well, it's easy to find throughout your, your school. You want to find something about uh, Michigan State, go to straight to Michigan State and have anything we've mentioned about Michigan State on our podcast in the past. And before you go, if you don't mind, hit us up and subscribe. That helps us out. And uh, you can follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. And you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it's available each and every day. Audio comes out at 4 a.m. Eastern. Video comes out at 6 a.m. Eastern. We're right there. And also, don't forget Lockdown Sports Today, our uh, Lockdown's 24-7 uh, streaming channel. All sports, all the time, all of our stuff in the Big Ten, 24 hours a day. And uh, Lockdown Sports Today, subscribe there as well. That will do it for us. As uh, always, thank you very much for checking us out. Can't wait already to talk to you tomorrow. We'll have all the latest Big Ten football, basketball, everything going on. Uh, can't wait. For Lockdown Big Ten, I'm Craig Sheeman. Thanks for checking us out.